So lithium ion phosphate cells come in a variety of options. So I've got a few here. Obviously, we've got our traditional standard prismatic cells there, which that's an EVE 280 amp hour cell, which I've covered in a couple of previous videos and currently building uh, the Apexium DIY battery box. Uh, here are the, uh, well, here is the other one, which is the uh, one that I featured in the scan video. And uh, that's another kind of blade cell. And again, I believe these are used for automotive purposes in China. And these are the uh, blade cells I'm going to cover today. Uh, I bought these quite a while ago, actually, and I had some ideas of what I wanted to do with them. But I'm just going to show you the way that they're configured, um, what kind of things I got out of them, and um, how I can make them work for my next project. Starting off with their obvious size or their length, they actually come in at around... See if I can get that on screen. Uh, about 94, 95 centimetres or 950 millimetres. Uh, just over three foot um, if you're watching this in the US or anywhere else that uses Imperial. So that means that they're actually quite long and thin. These particular cells are actually uh, 138, or that, that was their original um, capacity when they were in the car modules, because these again are from automotive trade, I believe, in China, where they're stacked together next to each other uh, to actually make up the uh, battery packs that go into the vehicles. So in terms of the, uh, if you like, the width of them, I'll try and get that on there now. As you can, hold on, that's not working too well. I am being careful, and that's a metal tape measure. They're about 15 uh, millimetres, one point, I'd say 1.5 centimetres, or just over half an inch in width. And depth-wise, uh, let's get that there. So they're around, you can see that correctly, about 90 millimetres, or around just over three and a half inches on that. So that's their size, and they're usually uh, packed together sort of vertically next to each other. I'm just going to set these up to show you what um, they're normally packed like. Right, so I've uh, lined them all up vertically now, and as you can see, they're quite neat and tight package, uh, quite uh, long, obviously, just under a metre in length. And I'll just show you the uh, terminals on the end. So one of the challenges I've had with looking at it in this configuration is actually making sure that I can get suitable bus bars in there to ensure that none of them touch. So I don't want any shorts, uh, obviously, to occur because it's quite easy where they're actually really close together, if you can see that. So these, um, these terminals are very close. And at the moment, they're configured in their normal way that you do it to build um, a standard 24 volt battery. So I've got eight cells. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that would make me a 24 volt lithium ion phosphate cell but the uh, problem or the challenge I've had with this is again to get these bus bars sorted so I've actually had to hand make them and if you do know anywhere that do sell these particular bus bars again I'm quite happy to make them myself but um, that's not the plan I've got for this particular build I'll just show you that they've got these uh, the little vents there as well the little uh, blast vents there if just in case anything goes wrong which is the same as the uh, pressure release area there that um, if the battery does get into trouble it can release anything that's built up inside so I'll just show you the other end now and it's a similar story so again one of these here I think from my memory serves me correctly the one that's in the middle is the negative and the one that's closer to the end is the positive so uh, that's that's how I would connect up to make a, a battery in this form you can actually see some of them that are already on sale on um, Alibaba or AliExpress. You'll, you'll see that they have these long versions of this metal box and then it's effectively a battery that has some kind of Anderson connector that comes out of it to connect up to your system. So uh, let's have a look round and see the way I want to do it for this particular build. Oh, before we do that, I just want to show you the attempts that I've made. And these are just the bits of aluminium. I bought aluminium uh, bar and... Um, spent quite quite a number of uh, hours trying to get these so that they fitted correctly but again I had some overhang here and there they're not the easiest thing to um, to make 
So I'm like, say, I'm looking for anyone else. So I like, say, if you've seen any of these, please let me know in the comments below. That would be very useful. But let's get on to the way I'm going to configure it. So in terms of battery condition and capacity, yeah, these are definitely second life cells. There's no doubt about that. Uh, they've just been rewrapped. As you can probably see, we've got different colours on there. We've got a few uh, dents and a few knocks in there. But so far, the testing's proved OK on them and they're working perfectly OK. And the other thing that these um, blade cells have the advantage of is they're apparently they're pretty safe as well in terms of uh, if you get anything that punctures them. So I'm just going to put up a, um, a, if you like, a nail puncture test video. It wasn't my video, but in the top corner now, if you want to have a look at that. Again, this is, uh, I'm not a battery expert, so um, in terms of safety, so uh, I'm not going to say these are safer than anything else because that's just not something that I'm uh, qualified to comment on. But in terms of the safety element of them and how they operate, uh, they look pretty impressive, you know, on the uh, stuff online. Again, you can just search for BYD uh, battery puncture cell test or something like that as well if you don't want to look at the video that I've just suggested. But yeah, it's interesting um, Interesting watching. Um, in terms of the capacity, uh, I'm hoping that's in view. So these were obviously 138s when they were new. Um, and I've gone through and tested with my, um, my, normal test that I've, my normal test setup that I've got. And yeah, this one here is coming at 136. We've got a 138 there, just over 138 actually got almost a 140 there as well so you can see how they're all over the place but again these are second life cells there's no doubt about it so it's going to be i did a couple of tests on that because i interrupted one so first one come out 135 and the next one come out 136 because i actually interrupted that test so it was 136 in the end uh, there's one that's almost um 138 again almost 138 136 and 137 so in theory, I could build a battery here with the lowest one on there, which I think is probably the top one. So I can get somewhere in the region of about 136 amp hours at 24 volts. So uh, a reasonable size battery. And that means that, you know, I can actually just configure it in the way I want to configure it. So the cells are now configured in a series order. So up here, uh, the ones that are in the middle, or the terminals that are in the middle of the cell are actually the negative. And the ones that are more on the off center, if you like, are actually the positive. So these cells now are connected up in series. So the first cell connects into the next one and then go around again. And it, then the next one connects into the next one and so forth all the way down. So they're all connected in series. And right down to the what would be the positive of the battery and the negative of the battery. Obviously, this is just a mock up. I'm not going to be uh, using it in this manner because I need to mount them properly. But what I did find was that uh, these uh, 280 amp hour, well, what came with the 280 amp hour cells, Eve cells, and I ordered some more of them actually fit quite well on the end. Obviously, I need to mount them properly because they're actually touching the floor. So they've got a slight overhang either side, which I need to sort out as well. But I'm going to mount these in a different way to the prototype that I'm going to build. So hopefully that should fit quite snugly and also the other thing I've got to do is also add the BMS so I don't know whether I'm going to be using this one as yet but obviously this is just set up as it is at the moment there's no kind of cell protection on there or balancing or anything of that description so I'm going to uh, set one of these up and again I'm not sure if I'm going to use that one to uh, on this particular project or not but um, I've had a few questions from um, beginners on this just coming into this and uh, looking at it so when you connect the cells in series, obviously it pushes up, I say obviously, it pushes up the overall voltage of the battery. So all of these cells here are 3.2 volts nominal. So that's normally the reference voltage that you use on lithium ion phosphate batteries. Um, obviously they go up to 3.65 volts uh, when they're fully charged. And, um, you know, and, and that's kind of like where you get to the top and the bottom. Normally they're around 2.5 when they're empty, as in 2.5 volts. But just uh, anyone that's new to this, effectively it's just like using standard batteries that you would use, like these alkaline ones here, in a remote control. On their own, they're just 1.5 volts. But if you then put the positive on here, I'm hoping that's visible, to the negative, that then gives you a three volt battery in this case. So that's all really doing here with the uh, lithium ion phosphate cells, 
just adding them all together in series so the negatives uh, against the positive and they're all connected in series and again for a 12 volt you just have four cells so if I was making a 12 volt one of these obviously I just have one going into number two going into number three and going into number four and then this one here would where it would stop so this would be the positive of the battery and that would be the negative. So that's all I'm doing on that. So I'll just show you what I've got. I'll attempt to do this one handed. Show you just what I've got in terms of this overall cell. If I can get that sorted. So put that on the positive, that on the negative. So I've just touched that to that and then that's to that. And we're getting, it's probably not a good touch actually. So it's just, so it's about just over 27 volts, so these are a reasonably high stat, and that's probably because I'm not touching them properly. So we have 27.3 volts for this battery, so um, it's close to uh, float, float voltage, which is 27.2, or where I normally run my batteries to for float voltage. So as good as full. So uh, that's really the quick lowdown on the configuration that I'm going to try. So I'm going to try for a flat power wall, so something that's really nice and flat, um, so I've got to figure out how I'm going to mount this and I've got some ideas and some things in, the, uh, in my toolbox to use and then uh, we'll see how we can get this one together. So I feel a bit silly because I actually completely forgot I'd already ordered these extruded aluminium T-bars ages ago and I've been tripping over them in the garage for <laughs> quite some time now as part of this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay these out on the floor and then just mount the cells in them just to show you how it's likely to look and then get ready to mount it to something else to make the power wall bit. So there you have it, very neat and tidy. So I actually bought, how many, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I bought nine of these uh, T-bars. And again, so that's had overlap at the end. So I've got overlap that end and then overlap on that end. And they fit really well and they actually look because again, I had these cut to length, uh, to order, and they actually really fit well, and they actually fit better than I was expecting. So let's just pull one up and just show you what it's like underneath. So again, it's just, that's how the bars sit. So again, these bars here I'm gonna use to attach to probably some pallet wood initially for the prototype, but they fit really nicely. So I suppose the next thing is to quickly do is just to check the bus bar still work. Obviously, because we've got an additional piece there. So let's put that on there. Oh, that's not fitting. Okay. So I oh know that's not supposed to fit, is it? Because that's the uh, that's the or will be the positive. So let's. So these should fit. There we go. That fits okay. Let's see if that one works. That's fine. It still fits perfectly. So these bus bars look like they were a good option. So they fit perfectly there. Let's just check the other side. So that goes in there like so. Fits perfectly. Fits perfectly. And this next one down. Let's see that one. That fits perfectly as well. And then let's just try this one here. Ah, problem. Okay, that one's not quite there. So these terminals again, because they're from different batches, no doubt. They're all set up differently. So what I might need to do is this bottom cell here, I might need to play a little bit of Jenga and move it around so that I can get something that's closer to fitting. But um, yeah, generally, I think that is an excellent start. So I just had a eureka moment here and the easiest way to fix this uh, bottom troublesome one, which wasn't fitting with the particular bus bar was just literally flip it over, even though it's mainly centered because this is obviously the negative, even though this is mainly centered. I'll try and do this one handed, it's not working too well. Um, it must be a little bit offset, tiny, tiny piece offset. So let's get that straight there. And then let's see if this now fits. <laughs> Look at that, perfect. So this is the configuration I can use for the whole piece. So this uh, is the uh, positive and this is still the negative. So once I've hooked it all up, it's good to go. But that is all perfect and ready to mount to the prototype board. Okay, so I've laid it out, as you can see here, on some pallet wood that I've found. I guess the only problem with pallet wood is it's very inconsistent. It's obviously been exposed to the elements at some point. It's all warped and all that. So I'm 
maybe have to come up with another idea, maybe go for just a piece of sheet plywood or something like that, which I'll need to get hold of. Um, so let's get these uh, batteries mounted in. Again, I've gone over here a little bit as well to give terminal protection as well. But yeah, I need to really consider that. So that can probably cover, be covered off in a part two because this is, the video is probably already getting long enough. So uh, let's mount the batteries back in and see what it looks like on the pallet wood. So it's not too bad at all actually, not as bad as I was expecting, but the wood's still very, very warped and all over the place. But there you see I've got uh, a bit of extra protection there for the terminals over the edge. So that however I sandwich these in, because another little problem I've got to look at as well is they've got a slight lip here. So where, however I decide to sandwich these in place so they don't obviously move, I need to probably cut grooves out of the wood or whatever I use to secure it so that that actually slots into it, meaning it's putting pressure on the cell to keep it uh, in place, especially as this is gonna be upright. But yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with that overhang there so that it will give um, terminal coverage, should I say, so the terminals aren't exposed once I've sandwiched it in, however I do that. But yeah, that's pretty good. But I think maybe one sheet of ply because when I attach these particular um, bars here, I'm going to need to drill uh, sort of fairly small holes because there's not much uh, gap there to get screws in because I'm probably just going to screw these directly to whatever wood I end up using prototype or final uh, production model if you like. But yeah, in terms of it as a starting block, I'm really quite pleased with that. The other thing that I should really do as well is just tell you how much these cost uh, I'm just putting up on screen now how much these cost me from, I think it was AliExpress going way back now. Um, as you can probably imagine, these sell prices might have changed quite a bit since then. But that gives you an idea of the sort of size of battery you can kind of build if you did want to try this alternative method to more of a flat approach. Or even if you can find the relevant bus bars to actually make it in, you know, the, the stacked approach I showed earlier in this video, as in they're all stacked together. Um, in a sort of a long line all you know butting up against each other so uh, in terms of what's next well I'm going to try and figure out the piece of wood and then come back probably be in a part two now and then obviously connect this up to one of the um, solar inverters I've got to actually just test it out to make sure that it's working but obviously I've got to top balance everything first and then just make sure that the BMS is uh, right and working properly so that probably concludes this video and kind of a part one. Um, if you do have any comments, questions or suggestions on anything you've seen in this video, please pop it in the section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and stay tuned to DadVinci.